but mostly I just want to see people climb really freaking well. And, and this is a showcase for the highest climbing talent in the world. This is Climbing Gold. Do you get asked if you're going to compete at the Olympics? Yeah, a little bit. And people are like, oh, you're going to the Olympics? And I'm like, no, no, I'm going to the Olympics to interview people about how good they are and not to actually do do the competition myself. Could you? I mean, is that even an option, do you think? Or how strong have it, have those competitors gotten? Yeah, I mean, competition climbing is far beyond anything I can do right now. But I actually think the simplest way to break it down is the fact that, that on the World Cup circuit right now, the average age on the podium is normally, you know, sort of between 19 and 23, let's say. Uh, you know, depending on who wins on which days. And I'm turning 39 this summer, right after the Olympics. And you're just kind of like, you know, like nobody asks a 39 year old gymnast why they're not going to the Olympics. You're just like, it's just not done. You know, the, like gymnastics, uh, you know, the people winning are 16 to 24, basically. And competition climbing is skewing that direction as well. And on the men's side, there are a handful of competitors who are early 30s, but they're the best climbers in the world. And there's certainly nobody in their late 30s. <laughs> That, that that ship has sailed. Yeah, that ship sailed a long time ago. Yeah. How hard are they climbing in these competitions? Well, the bouldering grades, from what I've heard, I mean, I can't actually do any of these problems. So I don't really know. But what I've heard is that the boulders are actually not the hardest grades, technically. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're elite, of course, like the average person can't climb any of these. But they're, uh, but they're more tricky. But the routes, like for the, for the, for the route climbing competition, for lead climbing, those routes are, you know, 14 plus, I mean, basically at a, at a global standard because they're on siding, they're doing a first try and it's, and it's often 14 plus or maybe even 15 minus now for finals and things. So basically they're, they're very, very hard. You know, it's like, there are things that, that even a good climber couldn't even necessarily interface with the holds. Like if I just went up and tried to climb the lead route, I, I'd be surprised if I made it past the second bolt. I'd be like, whoa, this is just totally outside my class. Like, I probably wouldn't really be able to clip the draws because I wouldn't feel comfortable, like, holding the holds with one hand. It's so crazy to think that they are on sighting, under pressure, in front of an audience, on live television, essentially, what, 15 or 20 years ago as a sport, Was, we would have been freaking out if someone even just did it, you know? After, after years of work, Hundreds yeah. of tries. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, I mean, the standard is much higher than it was, you know, a decade or two ago. You you own some of the most important speed records in the world, namely the nose speed record on El Cap, uh, which you did just under two hours, which is essentially the equivalent of like doing a sub two hour marathon. Um, could you maybe hang with the speed climbers? No, no. Speed climbing is the fastest sport in the Olympics. I mean, speed climbing is the most extreme form of sprinting. And the type of speed climbing that I've done in the past and that, I'm, that I'm, I don't want to say I'm known for, but holding speed records on big walls around the world, uh, that is more like ultra marathoning or, or like super ultra marathon, like, you know, 100 milers and things like that. I mean, it's so far away physiologically and, and, and sort of strategic, like everything about it is so different from extreme sprinting that it's, you know, it's basically a different sport. Obviously, on something like the nose, you have rehearsed this. Um, you've thought about every, you know, kind of like, maybe not every single move, but you've thought about every single pitch in terms of where you might place gear, et cetera, et cetera. You, you know, there's a, there's a deep amount of practice that goes into, to doing two hours on the nose. Right. Um, how does that compare to the amount of practice that the speed climbers have done on this route? Well, it's interesting because, you know, I've practiced the nose quite a lot, but I think in reality to, to climb the nose in under two hours, we did somewhere between 10 and 20 uh, attempts on the route. So you're like, oh, we practiced it 10 or 20 times. But speed climbers, by comparison, have climbed the speed route, uh, well, really 10 or 20,000 times. Like they've climbed it in the tens of thousands of laps. They can climb the route blindfolded they can climb it multiple times in a row i mean they can do all kinds of things and you know of course we're comparing apples and oranges because the nose is three thousand feet tall and the speed route is only 45 feet tall um so you know obviously you're more capable of doing the speed route over and over but you know to say that we practice the nose you're like yeah we did a handful of times and then we did our best and we set a speed record but it's just nothing compared to running you know fifteen thousand laps on the same route refining your beta over and over and over mm -hmm. Sport climbing in the Olympics is not dangerous. It's not climbing without a rope. Why is it so cool to you? Oh, I just like seeing people do something really, really well. I mean, climbing doesn't have to have risk involved for it to be elite performance. And so 
climbing and and really you can only get to the most elite physical performance when you remove the risk uh you know to some extent though that said the bouldering at competition is actually kind of scary and and i'm sure the pressure involved with climbing in front of the crowds and the you know people screaming at you and just having to perform on command i'm sure it is actually quite scary uh to perform in competitions like this and i think that all the competitors go through all the same mental tricks that that climbers do outdoors to try to calm their nerves before a dangerous ascent uh, so, I mean, I think there actually is probably more similarity in the experience than people might expect. But mostly, I just want to see people climb really freaking well. And, and this is a showcase for the highest climbing talent in the world.